Yesterday, the President of the United States held a conference call with state governors, followed by a speech at the White House. During these conversations, he called upon state governors to control the battlefield and dominate their communities in response to protests and riots over racial unrest. In his speech, he also claimed that if governors did not do so, he would deploy the US military against citizens in the streets. Following the speech, police cleared the area of a peaceful protest using tear gas, so the president could walk across the street to St. John's Episcopal Church, stand in front of it, and lift a Bible in his hand for a photo opportunity. The diocese governing that church has condemned this action forcefully. Today, stories have come out that church staff and other volunteers were serving at St. John's at the time. They also were driven out by the tear gas. We are living through uncertain, volatile times. We've all seen acts more horrific than making a few threats and walking across the street. And we're free to speak of and condemn those things as we see fit, personally and as congregations. We all have the ability day to day to operate within the rights and laws that our nation has set out before us. But when a government official makes threats of violence against fellow human beings, then lifts the Bible in front of a church to justify that action, that official makes an incorrect claim about God. When church workers are driven from places of worship and sanctuary so their building can be used as a prop, it calls into question the purpose and power of the church itself. We should not remain silent in the face of injustice anywhere. Our calling as people of faith is to protect the vulnerable and uplift the marginalized. We must not remain silent when God and God's word are used as tools to do just the opposite. The Bible that the president lifted in his photo includes these words. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. When we are tempted to uphold the law, we remember when the scripture told us that the greatest law of all is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And the second, which is just like it and just as important, is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And on these two things, all the law and all the commandments hang. When we are tempted to divide the world into camps of good and evil, us versus them, we remember when scripture tells us, 
You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for them who persecute you, so you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rains on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Even if we believed the rhetoric that is being put before us, even if we feared for our own self-interest, as we are being encouraged to do, we are commanded to react differently than the president did yesterday. The witness given by that action was wrong. The words and implications were incongruent with the book he held in his hands and with the church he stood in front of to justify himself. The people in St. John's Episcopal Church, who were giving aid, belonged there. The president did not. His words did not live up to the inspiration of the book he used in order to justify them. Faith does not oppress. Love does not dominate. Our communities are not a battlefield to be conquered. Our neighbors are not our enemies. God is not a symbol, a prop, or a tool, and neither is scripture, and neither is the church. To these things, people of faith say no. On behalf of neighbors who have no voice or whose voice is being silenced, the people of God rise up and say no. In the face of violence, threats to control or eradicate, being called enemies of order or progress or safety, the church says no. We will speak for love, now and always, in every time and place. We will not be used. We will not give up. We will not be silenced or driven out. We do not live or die to ourselves, but to the God we serve. The God who embraces all children, especially the most vulnerable, for the sake of goodness. Here and everywhere, we will stand. Stand in faith, stand for love, stand together.